Hello, Dr. Macken. My name is Natalie Olin, and I'm going to be talking about the documentary Narco Cultura. And Narco Cultura is a documentary that is based on the narco um, culture, um, as it's stated in the title. Um, in this video, we see the differences between um, the reality and the fantasy when it comes to corrido music um, and how it has some people um, fantasizing and wanting to be a narco and um, in this video we do see the sad reality that the people in Juarez face um, having to deal with um, car um, cartel members and um, some facts that were presented in the documentary in 2007 President Felipe Calderón declared war on the Mexican um, cartels. Um, you have all these um, cartels fighting the Mexican army and that is leaving many to question if it's even possible to end the drug war. After war was declared, homicides committed in Juarez reached an all-time high um, with the all-time high in the rise of homicides and murders. Um, in the beginning, we do see the director makes a comparison of Juarez, Mexico to El Paso, Texas. Um, dip, um, making a comparison on the murders and how in the year of 2010, El Paso only had five murders, which made it the safest city in the United States at the time. And um, Juarez, Mexico um, was known as being one of the dangerous cities since it did have over a thousand homicides that same year in this documentary we are introduced to two protagonists um one being richie soto and two being edgar Quin i'm sorry i can't pronounce his last name quintero and um in the beginning we meet richie soto he is a crime scene investigator um who has lived in juarez all his life he was born and raised there, so he does love his city dearly. And um, Richie explains how his city has changed throughout the years, especially since the cartel has moved in um, around that area. He does explain how there are no jobs for um, the people there. All the businesses have been ex extorted by the cartels and the director follows him on his daily his daily routine at work and to see what it's like um being on the mexican side um how a crime scene investigator works and um well most of his day is not spent in the office it's actually spent out out outdoors in the streets of juarez or anywhere nearby any cities nearby juarez and um the the violence you get a really good glimpse of all the violence that happens in Juarez um what he what Richie Soto has to deal with well not really deal with but what he sees on a daily basis and um it's very graphic and the documentary does give a good glimpse of that um we also get to see Mr. Soto's personal life um he does live with his mom and he does have relatives that live with them and um he does fear whenever he does leave home or work um since being a crime scene investigator or working in any criminal justice system in mexico it does make him a big target for the cartels as he does explain in the documentary and um so he does fear for his life um he would he has seen three colleagues um been murdered well, not really seen, but he has lost three colleagues um, in the past years, as he explains. And during filming, um, his boss um, does resign since he was um, named in a video that was sent by the cartels. So with the threats he received, um, he did not take that light. Who knew if he was working with them or not, but he did resign after receiving threats. And um, we do learn about a journalist. Her name is Sandra. She does um, share some some um, some thoughts on what she how she feels about the cartels and narcos. 
and um, how she believes that the children in the cities they look up to narcos um, since they do they believe that they have power and how um, they get anything they desire just by being a narco I'm sorry not um, or working with the cartel and she does give a lot of good information um, one of the information she does share is that there are over a hundred um, murders committed and out of the a hundred only three get pushed forward and out of the three only one will get actually prosecuted a lot of the um, the cases um, they end up getting put away since there's not evidence or not enough evidence or just they're too scared to even say anything they're scared for their life and um, that's pretty saddening um, the things that go on over there on the other side of the border and um, she does explain how there's a 99% failure rate um, with the criminal justice system um, also the director does interview um, I'm sorry goes to a prison and does interview an inmate who used to be part of a drug cartel and the inmate does explain how the cartels run, ran the streets in Mexico all um, in certain parts of Mexico how the law feared them and how there was no such thing as a law since the cartels um, ran everything um, he does explain how in the prison they did kill many people since the prison men I'm guessing were um, bad guys and they did let people come in with um, guns and they did kill a lot of inmates so that just shows how the criminal justice system is in these um, small towns in Mexico and we are going to talk about the second protagonist his name is Edgar, Edgar um, Quintero and he's a lead singer of a Mexican-American band called Pucanas de um, Culiacan um, and Edgar lives in the US side he lives in Los Angeles and he sings um, in the beginning we find out that he does write lyrics for men for these guys and um, judging on the lyrics you would assume that they are cartels not cartels but they are gang related drug related the men who he's writing these songs for and um, that's how he makes some of his money um, the other way he makes his money is by being the lead singer of this band called Bucanas and um, Mr. Quintero uh, music um, in the documentary he plays out his music and um, we hear how violent the music is it's very graphic it's graphic music it's um, where they're singing that they're beheading someone um, in his in the shows in their shows wherever they go they are sold out they you have the crowd singing along with them um, singing about kidnapping people torturing people um, the crowd sings to them and the crowd seems to love it especially when the, the band members come out waving weapons and wearing black masks so that just shows how um, how corrido music is portrayed in this documentary it's portrayed as it's portrayed as vi um, violent and um, you can um, you would think that mr. Edgar is um, a drug lord or something like that but no he actually has never stepped foot in Mexico he gets his information off the internet from a certain website that is just about cartels where they post their videos of torturing people in the background having um, corrido music playing so that's where he gets all his um, information from that's where he gets that's where he comes up with the lyrics for his songs and um, he does throughout the documentary you hear that he would want to visit Mexico he would want to live over there that they should just leave him over there so he can come back with more information um, more lyrics to add to his music 
and um, later in the documentary we do see that he does visit Mexico and he does run into where he plays shows and at the shows he does meet certain members of a cartel and they bring him along with him they show them they show him this life of luxury where they're bragging how they can get away with everything how the cops fear them how they can do drugs um do whatever they want shoot at things and not get caught so uh, mr edgar loves that he sees that he loves it he does go ahead and shoot weapons up in the sky making sure he's recorded to show that he you know does have what it takes i guess to be a cartel um in the end in his ending he does go visit a cemetery where they have these tiny um, luxury mansions and that's where all the um past narcos are laid to rest um they are very fancy they they're very young too if, if i've noticed in the in their tombstones the years the birthdays the day of the the day they have they had died they're very young in their 30s or late 20s so that just shows where how far um those men lived so also i do like how the director ties in both um edgar quintero and richie soto how he does compare both going back and forth while Edgar over here is living his life, enjoying everything that Mexico has to offer. Free drugs, um, free liquor, everything. And Richie Soto over here lives in fear. Him being a crime scene investigator, um, you see that he has to pick up the mess that the cartels leave behind. Um, sort of saying that... Um, it's two very different but they both take place in the in the cartel world i would have to say and um richie on the other hand loves where he lives he um he's known to some of the locals as a bullet collector and he finds that that is to him that they don't acknowledge his work and the time he puts into working so he does um, sometimes feel that his job is really nothing compared to other people but he does do a lot for his city he does love his city he does there are out of every good there are out of every bad there are good people and the city of Juarez is a good city as he shows in the documentary um, in my opinion this documentary was very informative um, I did like how the, like I said, the director jumped back and forth, showing the difference between um, one's opinion, one how one sees this lifestyle, and how the other sees the lifestyle of being a narco a cartel, and um, just the culture. Um, like the journalist had mentioned, that the young people see narcos as um, modern day Robin Hoods and how women when they get older they would want to marry a narco since that's the way of life how some of them um, portrayed it when they were interviewed so that just gives you another um, a different look on things on how many of them see um, cartels and um, but not really knowing the consequences of what's behind it that it's very dangerous um, but as for the criminal justice system in Mexico um, they do explain that it's a very corrupt um, system and how many of them many um, police officers and even the people of Juarez mentioned that they can be trusted since you don't know who's the good cops and who's the bad cops but this documentary was very informative. Um, it did explain, it opened my eyes to something different. And um, it gave me a lot of information that I did not even know, especially in Juarez, Mexico. And um, it's a very good documentary. I believe um, just um, if you're anybody who's anyone in Mexico, um, you'll get your way. and. That's what it's portrayed as um, there. So it's um, 
well thank you so much and um yeah